Whoop, hello, it is that time. I know you guys have been waiting for this one. Turn it up. Hey everyone, Kaylee, your friendly neighborhood hairstylist here. And today we're going through part two of my rice water hair video where I show you guys the recipe and the results of rice water on my hair. Let's go. The rice journey continues. If you haven't seen my first video, I really recommend it. We talked about the history of rice water and its traditions in the Red Yao community in China, and I loved diving into that. We also talked about the science behind the actual ingredients in the rice water treatment to see if it could do what it claimed it was gonna do. The results were promising and now we're here. And our task today is to figure out exactly how to put this thing together. Because we know the ingredients. We've been told the ingredients. We were not told how much of each ingredient or how to put them together. I found some videos from the Red Yao Village that I'm going to be using and then I did a lot of experimenting. I've been making so much rice water. <laughs> Essentially, I'm gonna break down the past month-ish of my life making as many different types of rice water as I could think of and at the end I'm gonna share with you guys the recipe that I came up with that I tried to get as accurate as possible to what they use in the Red Yao Village and also some easier ways to do it and then some products that you can just buy off the shelf if you'd prefer not to DIY your own treatment. So, all that said, we have a lot of grounds to cover. Let's get into it. Of course, don't forget to hit that like button and make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. My name is Kaylee and I post videos once a week on Fridays teaching you all about hair. And I would love for you to be part of the Bradaholic family here on Kaylee Melissa. Now, I am very appreciative that the Red Yaw women have shared their ingredients with us, and I want to respect their tradition by just recapping it for you guys before we get into anything else. Basically, this rice water hair treatment or hair rinse is the result of a millennia-long tradition of creating hair treatments with the rice and tea that these Red Yao women grow. The Red Yao community is a subset of the Yao people group and they are called Red Yao because of their beautiful red clothing that they still loom and embroider by hand. In this community, hair represents prosperity and longevity and is a symbol of beauty and their rituals around hair cutting, care, and styling are at the very heart of their sense of tradition. So hair is a large part of this community and I am very grateful that they've shared their ingredients with the world so that we can try it too. And of course, I want to say thank you by respecting and acknowledging their culture. Uh, if you want to know more about it, I really recommend checking out part one and the videos linked below. Now into the recipe trial process. <laughs> Let's go on a journey into all of the various concoctions I have created trying to get this recipe right. <laughs> For the first attempt, Anna Laura and I filmed together trying to follow this video to create the rice water, it was a lot of guessing the proportions, and it was full of end of week chaos. It's cooking day! Welcome to the kitchen! Yeah! I got to be Hiram in my last video, and I get to be Rosanna Pancino in this video. We have assembled our ingredients. We have brown basmati rice, grapefruit, tea seed oil in place of tea bran, and faux tea root. Alright, so the very first thing that the women do is they wash the rice, they wash it twice. The first time is just kind of like a rinse and stir. Mm -hmm. Save that rice, and then they get it wet and they super scrub it for like five to 10 minutes. Okay. And then all of the water that comes off of that becomes the base. All right, we gotta figure out uh, some ratios Some here. ratios. I mean, usually when I see it being done, they're making like a vat. Mm. So let's say one part rice to three parts water. That was one and a half cups. So we're gonna do, why did I choose the hardest ratio? Our way of figuring out is to figure out like what will fill two of these pretty close because we each want one. So for two people, we're doing two cups of rice and then we're gonna do six cups of water. So we have a one to three ratio. This is entirely decided because I saw one person do one to four and one person do one to two and I don't know which one to pick so I'm sticking it in the middle. So we're gonna need three cups of water for the first round of washing. All right, two. <laughs> Five million. Shit. Don't say numbers. Now we have two cups of rice, three cups of water, clean hands. We're really just gonna like mush this around a bit. Do a little dance, dance. Do a little bit of this, a little salt bay with the rice. And this one's not really gonna take all that long. It's just uh, just doing a quick little rinse. But you can see some of that starch coming off, which is what we want, that cloudiness. So now that we've got the rinse cycle done, we're gonna save this water and reuse the rice for a scrubbing round. So I've got a colander over a bowl. Hey. We've got some starch released. Now we're gonna do three cups of more water and we're gonna do the scrub cycle. They scrub for like minutes. We're talking like five to 10. We're getting in there. We're rubbing 
the rice back and forth. It's a whole thing. It's just thing. like exfoliating my hands. We've got this water compared to this water. That's a lot more translucent. Mm-hmm. Getting the goodness. It smells like rice. Hot take. Yeah. <laughs> Get all that good juice out of my hands. <laughs> I'm gonna put the rinse water cycle rice into the pot. And now we're gonna put the scrub cycle. Wow, so good. Next, we're gonna take the peel of one grapefruit. I think it's best to let Anna Laura handle the knives. I uh, am a very, very clumsy human being. I was working on not accidentally getting any of the fruit in there and I am scraping off any of the fruit that happens to stay. Alrighty, this is looking lovely. We have our concoction going. All right, I think it's time for some tea seed oil. So two capfuls. And then faux tea root. That's a strange smell. Tea and like rocks. Definitely dirt. Let's just like fill this up a little bit. I wanna say like a quarter cup. This looks like a good chunk. Yeah. So I feel like that's a chunk. And that's everything we need. We're gonna boil it all together Yay! to mix and blend. So I personally settled on boiling at medium heat for 10 minutes. We'll see how it goes. Hello, I am back. I've let this completely cool. So I am noticing that this mixture is a bit darker than the ones that I've seen the Yao women concoct in their videos. So I'm thinking I might've put a little bit too much root in. Yeah, it's very dark. I definitely put far, far too much root in there. Then I'm supposed to put these peels. Ooh, they're squishy. And I believe that is the process complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this closed and let this ferment for a few days and then we're going to try it on the hair. So our biggest mistake that day was using way too much faux tea root. Uh, it ended up being very dark and quite pungent. And also I made just way more than I needed. I had picked out this jar and I thought I had to fill it up and I was wrong, very wrong. That was enough for like six to eight people. <laughs> Whoops. After fermenting for a full week, it was time to test out this round of the rice water. The way we did that was to shampoo our hair first and then put the rice water in. That was when I got to interact with the fermented rice water for the very first time. All right, and now I'm going to uncork and see what this smells like. All right. Well, this is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Oh, oh, okay. Nasty. Uh, uh. I definitely smell the faux tea more than anything else. It doesn't smell bad though. It doesn't smell particularly sour or vinegary. Kind of smells like citrus tea. It's like dirty grapefruit. I've been a little bit nervous about this this whole week. We're just gonna go ahead and do it. We're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it. Hair in the bucket. I attempted to apply it in the same way that the Red Yao women do by having it in a large bowl, dipping my head in, and moving the water around. I found my hair was a bit too short for that. I'm gonna move it into the sink now. Seems less messy. I'm just gonna like, yeah, that works. I'm gonna rotate to the other side. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. Gonna put this on to keep the moisture in. That was an experience. So I let it sit 20 to 30 minutes, rinsed it out, applied conditioner. Oh, I smell that. <laughs> My conditioner was not enough to uh, overwhelm the smell of faux tea and then blow dried and styled my hair and the results were immediate. I mean, my hair felt really, really soft and then I went in the daylight and I could see that it was really shiny and that made me excited. Cause I was like, okay, okay. This could work. That is some shine, guys. Oh, I'm excited. Look at this. Look at it. Oh, yeah. And then for Anna Laura, her biggest takeaway the first time using it was that her hair was much easier to brush. Normally, uh, she spends several minutes detangling her hair and it takes a lot of effort and she was able to just glide her fingers through her hair much easily, which was very impressive. I also thought that her hair looked really lustrous and I told her her hair looked great like five times that day. So in the name of science, I went about concocting my second batch. And this one, I tried playing around with less, just overall. I changed the rice to water ratio and I got faux tea root powder and put in much less and that worked. My hair has not smelled like faux tea root since that first one. I also picked up some pH strips to see what the pH of the fermented mixture was. I wanted to see if it was too acidic or alkaline for hair. And the mixtures have been consistently around the five pH mark, which is still hair healthy. And I'm very excited about that. After the second treatment, Anna Laura and I were noticing cumulative benefits. So I felt that my hair was more soft and more shiny than it had been 
after the first one. Hi, second round of rice water here. Look at this. Are you kidding me? Okay, my hair feels soft. It feels healthy. It feels happy. It's good, guys. Wow. And then for Anna Laura, she noticed even more comb-ability in her hair. She went from having to take seven minutes to detangle her hair to less than one. She also had increased softness, reduced frizz, and more movability in her hair. So far, so good. So we had the base, and I wanted to work towards refining the formula as much as possible. Uh, so there were several offshoot experiments and one of them was designed to kind of fix the problem of having to shampoo your hair before you could apply the rice water. And uh, my path to that solution was slightly less than clear. Hello guys, I have an update. <laughs> so I realized a flaw in my rice water formulation and it is that I was looking at the nutrients of tea bran without looking at the function of it. And the function of it, essentially it's full of saponins which are nature's soap. So it helps the rice water to be cleansing, so it can be a co-wash, essentially. And that would keep us from having to shampoo first. So I was like, sounds great. I'm gonna look up stuff from the no-poo community. I'm gonna buy that. I'm gonna put it in. I fully did it, guys. I fully bought this stuff, made the concoctions, and then realized I got it drastically wrong. <laughs> This is Anna Laura's favorite thing. I'm so excited for this news to hit y'all. This is so good. I did this over the weekend. I might have had some wine in my system. I don't know. Uh, blame the wine, sure. Always blame the wine. Honestly, otherwise I have no idea how I did this. <laughs> anyway, I saw this word and my little lizard brain translated it to shiitake extract. And I was like, awesome. I'm gonna buy shiitake powder and I'm gonna put that in the rice water and it's gonna make it cleansing. Here it is right here. But Anna Laura is deathly allergic to mushrooms, so I also got rye flour, because that's also a popular no-poo method situation. So I was like, this is gonna be great. But then, like, my little spidey set started tingling, like, yesterday, and I was like, this just doesn't seem right. So I looked it up, and it's not shiitake extract, it's sakakai extract. And it has nothing to do with mushrooms. <laughs> you were about to put mushrooms <laughs> So here's the mushroom rice water. I'm not using it. There's no reason to use it. So I don't know, let's take a smell or something. <coughs> um, it smells like grapefruit and um, fungus, which is what it is. So I'm gonna pour that out. But I also, with the rye, I was like, I'm gonna boil it like I did everything else. I'm gonna let that ferment. And we have this um, jelly paste. This has expanded to multiple times its size now. And I'm not certain that either of us are willing to put this on our hair. I hate to waste anything, but this round is uh, being gifted to the drag gods. <laughs> yep, hope you guys enjoy that story. Yep. I'm pretty smart until I'm really not. So I ended up testing out soap nuts versus shikakai. I think that's how you say it. I really hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> and what I found was number one, they do definitely both clean my hair. My hair looked as though it had been shampooed and it lasted a solid three days before I ended up washing it again. And I honestly could have pushed it even farther. But then number two, I learned that my hair does not like uh, soap nuts on their own. This side where I applied it, uh, first of all, my scalp was quite itchy while the formula was on my head. And then after washing it out, my hair looked a lot drier. My ends were a little frizzier and it was all tangly whereas the shikakai side was really smooth and nice feeling and it had cleansed my hair just as much as the other side so i had a clear winner for me that being said the no poo community does a lot of blends where they use soap nuts and shikakai and ama leaf and everybody has their own preferences i'm just speaking to mine for today and then my final test was white rice versus brown rice because if you remember in my last video some of the studies i found were talking about rice bran and the benefits that you can get from that. Unfortunately, you don't get as many of those benefits with white rice. So I've been using brown rice in every experiment, but traditionally the red yaw women use white rice and I wanted to see the difference. Going into this mini study, my hypothesis was that the white rice was going to impart more shine and smoothness because it is mostly rice starch and that's what we know rice starch does. So I was interested to see if it was a big difference. And uh, it kind of was, I used it today. This is the white rice side. She is really shiny. This is the brown rice side. Still quite shiny, just not as shiny as this side. So we definitely got enhanced shine, which is awesome. We also got a much more pungent smell for the white rice. <laughs> Up to this point, the brown rice mixture with the grapefruit has always just smelled like grapefruit and faux tea root that one time. And honestly, I've really enjoyed the scent every time I used it. This time, 
I made a mistake. I decided to try using less grapefruit peel just to see if you needed a whole one or not. You do. So the brown rice mixture did not smell as good as usual, but it still smelled good. The white rice smelled terrible and I feel very bad for Anna Laura because she has a very sensitive sense of smell and she had a rough time with it. <laughs> oh, this does not smell good. No, it's really bad. I told you. I don't remember you saying that. <laughs> so I have already whipped up another batch of rice water with an appropriate amount of grapefruit peel and I will put the results here as to whether that fixed the smell, but I thought I would let you know. Oh, I almost forgot. It wasn't on my head, so I forgot for a second. <laughs> Anna Laura has noticed that her curls are getting clumpier and more defined the more that she's using the rice water. And so it looks like it's a really good way to revive and revitalize waves and curls. The curly community has known this for a long time. I'm just now jumping on the bandwagon. Look at them. Whoa. These are big girl curls. Whoa. Look, they're actually spiraled. Holy cow. That's real curly. Now over here, this side's always been a little temperamental. But these are real. Like, that's like curl pattern. Whoa. But that's really cool to know that the white rice did actually really enhance that side for Anna Laura. So it would also be helpful not just for shine, but for curl enhancement. Okay, so we know white rice gives us better shine and better curls. And this side has the rice brand benefits, hypothetically, of enhanced antigen duration and enhanced melogenesis in our hair. How do we pick which one to use. <laughs> Honestly, you can go with your preference. I'm gonna say that a lot of you guys are really, really gonna love what the right rice does to your hair because it, it smooths each strand so much. So you're gonna get so much more shine. If you need curl enhancement, you get that. You should probably get frizz reduction, easier combability, and therefore less breakage from friction and tangles. So I think you're really gonna love this. I am, for part three, gonna keep playing around with ways to get those rice brand benefits in there to see if there's any way we can get all of the smoothing and shine from this side along with the vitamins of this side. But for right now, I'm gonna go with the Red Yow Woman. It's as though they've been doing this for millennia and they know their stuff. We're gonna use white rice. So after all of that testing, I finally have my recipe. <laughs> and I want to introduce our new player, shikakai. We broke down the benefits of every other ingredient. Let's talk about this one. Shikakai is known as fruit of the hair and it has been used by Indian women for centuries for hair cleansing purposes. It is full of natural saponins, which is nature's soap and allows us to cleanse our hair without having an actual like soap in the formula. Shikakai itself is a pod-like fruit, the shells of which are dried and grounded to a powder and then used for hair washing. And it has been shown to be great for oily hair, to be cooling, to be antibacterial and antioxidant, and it has been linked loosely to hair growth. So overall, a really great ingredient to add into our mix, but I also need to let you know that you cannot get this in your eyes. Typically in the no poo community, people make a paste with this, and if the paste gets into somebody's eye, they've talked about it burning really, really badly we're using a much more diluted amount in our formula which is good but make sure that you keep it out of your eyes as much as possible and if that scares you for whatever reason um, you can look up some other no poo powders I'll link a resource below to see what else you could use in this formula and now it's time for the recipe I'm so excited so I did my very best to make this as accurate as possible to the original while using ingredients that I could source in the United States this amount is just a little bit more than enough for Anna Laura's hair so when I make it for myself I do a half batch of um, and you can adjust accordingly. As far as ingredients, you will need one cup of rice, two cups of water, a grapefruit peel, one teaspoon of faux tea root, and one half tablespoon shikakai extract. And then for the steps, the first thing you're gonna do is wash your hands. <laughs> Step number two is gently rinse the rice to remove any contaminants. Side note, the Red Yao women do save all of the water from rinsing their rice. I would attribute this to the fact that they grow, harvest, dry the rice themselves so they know if there are any contaminants on it. But in the US, we're pretty removed from the growing process, so it is nice to get a little rinse in there before we keep going. Step number three, now that we have clean rice and clean hands, we're going to put the rice and water together in a bowl and begin to wash the rice. This is when you're gonna see the water start to change color as the goodness from the rice 
washes off. You're gonna be doing these motions with your hands, these motions, and you're gonna do that for five to 10 minutes. I typically stop at the five minute mark, but you can go as long as you want. <laughs> then strain the rice water into a pot and we're ready to add our other ingredients. I'm gonna be adding my faux tea root, my shikakai extract, and the grapefruit peel. Bring to a boil and then simmer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you can allow your mixture to cool and then transfer it into an airtight container and place that into a cabinet to ferment for three to seven days. Side note again, the boiling, I noticed the Red Yao women do. I'm not sure how that changes the formula. I will be experimenting on boiled versus non-boiled next to see how necessary that is. To apply, you're going to transfer the mixture to a squirt bottle or spray bottle or bowl if you want, and apply to all of your hair until it is completely saturated, making sure to really get it on the scalp if you wanna make sure you're getting those gross benefits. Then you're gonna clip it up, and I recommend covering with a shower cap and allow it to sit for 20 to 30 minutes. Once you're in the shower, you wanna go ahead and scrub your roots as though you have shampoo in them, and then rinse everything very, very thoroughly. At this point, you can be done with your hair washing routine, or you can add in some conditioner if you like. I do still like to add conditioner to my hair, just because I just, I can't stop, but that is totally up to you. And that is it. It might sound like a lot because I had to describe every little piece of it, but I basically found myself meal prepping my rice at the beginning of the week. And so I washed the rice and I set it to cook while I make the rest of the hair water. And then at the end of the week, I use it on my hair and then the week starts over. I meal prep my rice, make my rice water and it continues. As far as fermentation, I did try playing around with that process, and so I've tried the mixture at one, three, and seven days to see what works best. The one day hit so different. It was a completely different experience in a bad way. It felt a little drying, my ends looked frizzy, it was soft but not shiny. I don't recommend. I have found good results with three, four, and seven days. So I recommend at least three days of fermentation, not a big amount of difference between four and seven days in results or in smell. So that is my best attempt at an authentic recreation using US ingredients. I do wanna talk about a much easier way to do it if you want to break it down from there and not have to do quite so much. The easiest version of this recipe is just to use rice, water, and grapefruit. I have to include the grapefruit in there because it really does help with the smell. <laughs> so you still want to wash your rice for five minutes. That part is very important. And then you can just add in your grapefruit peel, boil it or not, but put it in a airtight container in a cabinet for at least three days and then use and you can use it in place of your shampoo and just scrub it through your hair, rinse it out, use conditioner if you want. If you have oilier hair and you still want to shampoo your hair, you can shampoo your hair first and then apply the rice water, let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes and then do your conditioner. When I was doing the shampoo first, I would just dip my head in the kitchen sink and like rinse, shampoo, rinse, and then apply the rice water. If you wanna get a tiny bit fancier, you could definitely mix in the faux tea or the shikakai extract if you don't wanna do both. Faux tea is mostly for the scalp health. Uh, it was indicated for hair growth. It's one of the reasons why I kept it in. Shikakai uh, is obviously our cleansing powder, but you could use any other no poo cleansing powder that you prefer. I would say based on my previous experience, if you're gonna use something like rye flour, apply that right before you use it so it's not a gunky mess. So that is the complex and the simplified recipes. That being said, I understand if all of this sounds like way too much work, like concocting your own DIY hair treatment once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, whatever, is just too much. I'm with you. I have been making multiple versions of this multiple times a week for the last four weeks. I definitely understand. So I combed the internet and I found the products that you can use in place of this that will give you similar results. So for our first recommendation, this one is like, all the way up here. It is so good. The rest of them, they're good, but they're down here. This one is just like And that is Viore Shampoo and Conditioner Bars. Some of you guys came across this after watching my rice water video and asked me about it. I have purchased it, I have tried it, I am here for it. So this company uses rice water made from the Longxing Rice Terraces where the Red Yao women live. They buy the rice at a 500% markup and 5% of their profits goes back to the Red Yao community. Already love. And then you look at the ingredients and they're also fantastic. Like in the shampoo, the rice water is the third ingredient. There's a ton of it. 
And the other stuff that they're adding in is stuff that is really complementary to what the rice water does. So we already know in theory it's great, but I've also used it. And I have to say it is so good. I have been a big old stick in the mud about shampoo and conditioner bars. I did not want to try them. I have now been converted. <laughs> it was so easy to use. The shampoo felt like using normal shampoo. I was just like using a bar to get it onto my head versus a bottle. For me, the conditioner was easy to use as well. And the whole thing left my hair looking and feeling similar to how it does after a rice water treatment. So overall, it's a really great way to get to participate in this tradition because you're getting a pretty accurate formula and accurate experience, but you're also giving back to the community. So I'm really excited about it. And I really loved the results on my hair. I feel like because there is a lot of shea butter in the conditioner bar on my hair, I can't use the conditioner bar every day, but I could use the shampoo bar every day. Anna Laura used it, loved it, but said that the conditioner bar was a little bit too difficult to use with all of her hair and she would prefer to just use the shampoo. But overall, I don't think you'll go wrong. I very, very much recommend it. I got the scent Hidden Waterfall and it is lovely. All right, our next product in this category is the Myel Rice Water Split End Therapy. This one you can use as a leave-in treatment on wet hair, you can put it on dry hair, you can put it all over as an overnight mask. The overnight mask I added, I did that and I liked it. <laughs> it's full of really good ingredients and the rice water is very high up on the formula and it doesn't have a whole lot of like just filler ingredients. So I really appreciated that about it and I appreciate that it is very accessible. Next we have the Pattern Treatment Mask. Pattern is a brand by Tracy Ellis Ross and she has this treatment mask that is based on fermented rice water. It is meant for curly and coily and kinky hair. So if you fall in that hair type, recommend. I have not been able to try this one out. It's currently sold out, but the formula looks really good and it has great reviews. Then we have the Curl Smith Super Slip Prebiotic Primer. <laughs> that one's a mouthful. It is meant to be a pre-shampoo treatment and this one is a little bit more focused on scalp care and hair growth. The brand intends this one to be utilized with its other products in the same line. You're supposed to put this in and then immediately put the shampoo in. I think you could use this as a great pre-shampoo treatment, maybe leave it on for a couple minutes and then rinse it out. It has rice water pretty high up on the list and the whole of this one is really meant towards enhancing scalp health, enhancing hair growth, and also helping the hair strands. Overall, sounds like what we're doing with rice water treatments. Again, in a formula that can be used for everybody, but will really benefit curly hair. And finally, we have the Galinier, I think that's how you say it, scalp and hair serum. This one is based around scalp care and health and also helping you to have shiny, smooth hair. Fermented rice water is really high up on the list, but there's a lot of other really great beneficial ingredients as well. And this is gonna be like a lightweight oil treatment that you can put in day to day or leave on overnight as a mask. And those are the products that I recommend testing out if you wanna go into this whole rice water journey of Viore being at the very top of the list, other ones being great options as well. Okay guys, that has been my process, that is my recipe. Those are the products that I recommend checking out if you don't wanna make the recipe. But let's just take a second to talk about my hair. She's looking good. I've done four, five rice water treatments since I last saw you, and my hair is so shiny. Like who is she? Also, my hair is getting so long. I'm also taking vitamins and using scalp treatment, so I can't like only attribute that to the rice water, but just generally, my hair is doing good. Like better than it has since I started heat styling and bleaching it. And so I am really excited about this rice water journey. And now you guys have my recipe so you can join along with me as we chug toward part three. Going into part three, my goals are uh, number one, figure out that whole boiled versus non-boiled thing. That should have been part of this test. I forgot. See what another month or two months of rice water does for my hair. How much more cumulative are the benefits? because uh, I don't know how it's gonna look better than this. And three, I wanna figure out how to get some rice bran into this because I really love the benefits that I'm reading about in studies for rice bran on the hair and scalp. And I feel like we miss that when we use the white rice. So I wanna figure out how I can make this work where I get both all the results from the white rice and all the benefits from rice bran. Those are my goals for part three. Uh, ask me any questions you have in the comments down below so that I can really round that video out. And uh, join me on this journey now if you want to. You have the recipes, uh, both 
complicated and easy, whichever one. Try it, tag me on social, I wanna see how it goes. And honestly, if you end up trying Viore, also tag me in the results because I really like them and I wanna see how much you guys like them too. But that's it for today. I hope that you guys really enjoyed this. I have enjoyed this journey. I did not expect this when I started researching for part one. I didn't expect it to be more than one video. And now it's turned into a months long journey where my hair is evolving. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this as much as I have. If you do, please hit that like button, help support my channel and all the rice cooking I did this month. I've eaten so much rice, <laughs> wish I was kidding. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button so you can see when part three goes up, but also so you can join the Bradaholic family here on Kaylee and Melissa. And all of y'all hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time I post on Fridays with a new hair centric video. But that's it for today. Whether you're old or new or a casual lurker, thank you for spending time with me and I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye. These are curly cows. I love it. And that is the good good. No, no, no. <laughs> that is. I love that like I slowly got a smoky eye on this side throughout the course of the video. This eye is gonna kill me. Okay, bye.